Well, hello and welcome to all of our listening viewers here today. I'm Fiona Langsharp, IBCLC Director of Communications and MC here at Gold Learning. Well, welcome to everyone joining us here today. Uh, we've got a very special guest here today, Angela Loeber. She's going to be speaking at our upcoming Gold Lactation Conference um, and is going to be part of our add-on package. Now, we have some incredible add-on packages this year at our Gold Lactation Conference. This one where Angela's going to be speaking at is titled Breastfeeding and Medically Complex Infants. So this is going to be a great lecture pack that you can add on to your uh, conference. Um, and the title of Angela's presentation is Assisting Late Preterm Dyads Achieve Breastfeeding and Chest Feeding Success. So you can see that this is, of course, already um, one of those topics that uh, sometimes gets missed. And Angela and I had talked briefly about this before when we met online, and we're going to get into the topic in just a minute. But a quick reminder to all of our viewers listening in, of course, that our conference for our Gold Lactation 2020 conference is right around the corner. And you can register today by going to the website at goldlactation.com. I know many of you are getting ready, um, getting, your, um, getting your groups together, which is very exciting and we can't wait to see you online. Well, without any further ado, let's uh, hear from Angela. So welcome, Angela. It's great to have you here. Um, I really wanted you to introduce yourself and uh, I know we've got lots of people listening in from around the world. So perhaps you want to share with them where you are in the world. Sure. Thank you for having me. I'm so happy and honored to be here. This is amazing. But So I live in Phoenix, Arizona in the U.S. and um, I am a lactation consultant. I've been a lactation consultant for 15 years and I'm a registered nurse. I work at a hospital in our city and I also am the director of the lactation education program for Arizona State University. Wow, that's amazing. And I had been reading a little bit about sort of some of your career and um, you'd also recently, you've done your PhD at the Arizona State as University as well. Um, and so how was that for you? Because that that's a big, uh, that takes up a lot of your time too, right? <laughs> it is, yeah, it was, um, I'm not exactly sure how I got put on that track. It was it was just a <laughs> stroke of serendipity. And and um, I met somebody who was a breastfeeding researcher at my university and she said, you know what, you should do this too. And I thought, wow. okay, <laughs> sure. <laughs> and, but I'm so grateful for that. And, and it's been an amazing trip. And um, when I started the PhD program, I was in it for about a year and, and mm -hmm. my mentor said, you know, it's time for you to start doing research. What is the area in your field you feel needs the most help? And without a hesitation, I said late preterm infants, because wow. I feel like we have just missed them and failed them on a number right. of accounts. Yeah. And so it's become my mission now to help that and, and make it better. Wow. Well, that's incredible because that's exactly what I was going to ask you about. You know, how did this all come about? But let's back up a, get, a, a bit. You know, so you were asked to, you know, get a focus point, which is fantastic. But why why did you see that as being important? Because there I mean, there are so many topics. So what really drew you to looking at the late preterm dyad? So in my clinical practice, what I would notice is that um, it, it always seems to be a little bit of a struggle at the beginning in a hospital setting, mm -hmm. especially, and we're a high risk facility. So we have sick moms and then in turn right. babies who are struggling. But it was always the late pretermers that we knew we needed to take a little bit better care of, mm -hmm. but we just didn't really know how. And, right. and I would catch them going six, seven hours without feeding and which is, and then, you know, getting jaundice and Right. Except weight loss and it just wasn't acceptable. We have to do better and mm -hmm. and um, parents getting very frustrated and blaming themselves saying, right. you know, I've, I've been 12 hours at a bedside and, and mom mm -hmm. saying I'm failing as a mother, which that's okay. not at all what's happening. It's just baby needs help. So yeah, yeah, we need to come up with the tools and the way to do that. So that's how it all started um, when you noticed. So, and I would say that's probably a gap in care, you mm -hmm. know, in terms of what we see, because I think there there's a lot of attention that happens to our fragile babies and our babies that are preterm. Um, and then, you know, full term, there's always this discrepancy, I find, too, Angela, uh, in terms of who calls full term, you know, where the lines are drawn in different facilities. Is that something, too, that you try to sort of really um, help establish uh, what a late preterm timeline looks like? 
Oh, absolutely. It's in our postpartum area. There's really two babies. There's term and there's preterm, late preterm. Right. But late preterm can be the same size, can be mm -hmm. relatively stable and easily missed, especially when a nurse is very busy and has right. some other things going on that she needs to take care of. And mm -hmm. it's easy for these little babies to just sleep through feedings and the mom's thinking the baby's just sleepy. And, right. and so a lot more upfront education needs to happen so we can mm -hmm. support them better. Yeah. Yeah. I've often heard terms like, oh, we have such a good baby, you know, and those types of things. And unfortunately, yeah. that that can lead to some uh, real depleting when that baby goes home because that baby, in fact, is just sleeping constantly and so not really waking up for feeds. Yes, right. I find this area so fascinating because I do believe that it's a huge gap um, and you can't always tell. Um, sometimes there could be a discrepancy even in, you know, the dates. And of course, you know, every due date is an estimate, but mm -hmm. I think that we just need to be really observant. So is that something that you also have found in speaking with colleagues and professionals around the world is that we just need a heightened awareness here? We do, we do. And it, even the 37 week, because preterm is 34 mm -hmm. through 36 weeks. And, right. and like you said, there dates can be off and there's no, you know, magic switch where all of a sudden right. the base is firm. <laughs> so yeah. we need to be looking at 37s really closely too. But if we just heighten our awareness to um, what the late preterm is and what the needs are and how mm -hmm. we can best support, then that should also help those 37 weekers who look a little preterm and, and um, might actually be. That's excellent. Yeah, that's wonderful. So tell me what else you're doing, because I know uh, we're going to talk about the presentation that, that everyone is excited to hear in the in the conference. But tell me a little bit about um, what you're doing as far as teaching now, because it seems like you're doing a lot of teaching. Um, is that something that's exciting for you because you're getting a lot of those wow moments with students uh, <laughs> yeah. inspiring oh, you to go keep going? Yes. So wonderful. I Yeah. So our program at Arizona State University is really really exciting mm -hmm. and growing quickly. So right now we offer the 90 hours of didactic education that's needed for um, to sit the IBCLC exam. Oh, that's great. Yeah, and it's all online, self-paced. It's really wonderful. People all across the world are taking it. Um, mm -hmm. it's, so it's fantastic. We're in the process of breaking that 90 hours up into two 45 hour courses mm -hmm. that should launch within the next couple of weeks. And then we took the 45 hour courses that are not for credit and continuing ed, and we've put them into the academic catalog. So now there'll be undergraduate electives for anyone mm -hmm. in the call in the university. So a nutrition student can take it or a nursing student or oh, speech and language. It's really wonderful. And then we're going to increase that to a graduate level elective too. We're going to start a clinical track so students who need um, their clinical training can come mm -hmm. to us. And and um, and one of the most exciting things that's um, happening for this program is our 90 hours and potentially our 245 hour online classes. We are opening up to people in different countries so that if if there's a content ex expert out there in the world that says, you know, we'd love a program for our region, but we you know don't have the resources to make that course, we will kind of connect with that person, have a content expert come into the course, make the changes that are necessary for it to be appropriate to the environment, just culture, sure. because right now it's a little US centric because that's where sure. we wrote it. Yeah. And change it around and then package it and send it back. So um, we're just oh, hoping wonderful. to help yeah. people. And, and <laughs> that's right. Get lactation well, care where it needs to go. Well, that's a wonderful message because yeah. I, of course, you know, here at Gold, that's what happens. We have people coming in from around the world and um, because that's uh, a lot of what unifies families is breastfeeding, you know, yeah. around the world. Yeah. And I think that no matter where we are in the world, when we talk to those parents and ask them, you know, what their choices are, the majority of them really want to put baby to breast. And so, mm -hmm. um, you know, this is something that always excites us here, of course, at gold lactation. Yeah. Well, let's talk a little bit about your presentation coming up. So I want you just to give everyone just a little synopsis, a little teaser, perhaps of what they can expect uh, from your presentation here at gold lactation. Perfect. Well, great. So I'm going to talk about what late preterm is and why they struggle with eating and what the compounding factors are for mm -hmm. the late preterm baby, their issues of just being premature and how that affects feeding. And then what are the tools we can use to help the parents 
get back on track. So if their goal is to breastfeed their baby, mm -hmm. then maybe the baby's not ready for that. What? How can we protect the milk supply? How can we protect the Great. baby and move them forward? And, and I love that this is a global presentation because I would love to connect with people who are working to do this at the same time so we can create a package and say, okay, this is, you know, as a, a global lactation community, this is how we can come together and, um, and help these families. I have my ideas of putting mm -hmm. different pieces together, supportive feeding and um, help for the mom. But I think we need to just work all together. And, and Always, right? Do it, oh, yeah, do yeah. it as a community. That's right. Find ways to collaborate for sure. Well, right, you, heard, right. you heard Angela. Um, she's going to be here with us at our Gold Lactation 2020 conference. And of course, for all of our delegates who are going to be with us, we'll have access to that exclusive forum where you'll be able to talk with Angela, uh, share your experiences, and of course, uh, talk with all of the other speakers and delegates that are here as well. So that's wonderful. Thank you so much uh, to you. Dr. Angela Lober for being with us here today. It's just been my pleasure chatting with you. And I can't wait to hear more of what you have to say about that beautiful little late preterm uh, family. So that will be wonderful. And thank you to all of our, uh, again, delegates for listening in today. It's been great uh, having you here. I can't wait to hear your feedback as well on the conference. We'll look forward to that. Don't forget that if you haven't registered yet, you can go and do that now straight to the website goldlactation.com and register click on the registration link we can't wait to see you there and then of course you can put on your add-on packages at any time as well well thank you again to dr angela lober for being with us here today and of course to you, you our listening audience bye-bye for now everyone <laughs>